As part of our Commitment 2016 coverage, WGAL is bringing you coverage of the races that impact the Susquehanna Valley from the presidential contest to local races. I'm joined by the three Republican candidates running for the 101st Legislative District. The fourth, John Dissinger, has just dropped out of the race. This district covers Lebanon County, including the city of Lebanon and the boroughs of Palmyra, Mount Gretna, and Cornwall. The winner will replace Representative Maureen Gingrich, who has decided not to seek re-election. And with me from left to right are Jeff Griffith, and he is an educator and a pastor from Lebanon. And to his uh, left is Pierre Hess, and she is the Lebanon County Senior Deputy District Attorney. And then we have Frank Ryan, a retired U.S. Marine Colonel, who is now a certified public accountant. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for Thank being here. Thank you so here. much. Thanks for having us. We have had a very contentious budget season in Pennsylvania. What would you do, Mr. Ryan, to change that? Well, what we have to do is we have to uh, work across the aisle to try to get some degree of common sense about the f significant fiscal issues facing the state. Specifically, the spending's out of control. The property tax burden is absolutely excessive. When you say working across the aisle, what exactly do you mean? Well, I work specifically as an example with Eugene De Pasquale. I'm a certified public accountant. Many of Gene's staff members are CPAs. I've been working with Gene for about two to three years on various issues about performance audits. But how do we make the state government agencies much more effective, much more efficient in what they do to provide better services at a more effective cost for Pennsylvanians? And how would you achieve that kind of compromise that we didn't quite see this time around? Sure. Frankly, my professional background makes me different in that as a prosecutor, we are used to having tough conversations and negotiations and having to compromise with not only defendants, but their attorneys and sometimes even the court itself. I'm used to having those conversations. And you have to come to some end that while it doesn't please everyone in the room 100%, because you never will, it's at least a fair and a just outcome and everybody can live with it. That is the type of negotiation and skill that I would bring to the office once elected. How about you? Well, I agree that we have to definitely bring everybody to the table to, to discuss these things and try to come to some consensus that is going to give us uh, the help that we need. But beyond that, I think what we could do is to uh, bring a bill to the House, and if I have the opportunity, I'll bring a bill to the House that will guarantee we don't have these budget impasses again, that will take us to a point where we can protect our seniors, our children, the programs of uh, Lebanon County and the 101st District shouldn't suffer because the uh, Harrisburg political system can't get their job done. You mentioned pension reform. Absolutely. What do we do about pension reform? That's obviously not been discussed very much this time around. What, what should we do? Well, I think that's a critical issue. I specialize in keeping companies out of bankruptcy. I've been doing it for 40 years. I've worked with over 250 companies to specifically do that. What you have to do is, first of all, properly state the liability. Our liability is significantly understated. It's understated by approximately $40 billion. Second of all, you really need to work in the Auditor General's office and, and people on the other side of the aisle requires that very significant understanding of where we stand and what do we need to do. The estimated amount of liability per homeowner per $100,000 of assessed valuation could be as much as $20,000 to just cure the current problem. It's not sustainable. This is where we have to sit together with all sides, PSEA, SEIU, uh, the Pennsylvania Chamber and other agencies to say, what do we need to do to resolve this so people don't lose their homes? Or what will happen is you'll start seeing an increase in foreclosures. And once more, we have situations in Pennsylvania where uh, young people aged 21 to 30 can't stay in the state because there's no jobs in the state because All right. leave. Let's move on. Pension reform. Sure. Pension reform is a very complicated, it's a critical issue right now. And I understand why people are so interested in it, and I am as well. We are moving towards a, a 401k or a match-based system, and frankly, what we need to recognize is that it's not a simple problem with a simple solution. If it was, we would have one by now. Do you favor a 401k plan? I do very much. Frankly, if elected, once elected, I would never expect the state to do more for me than I'm willing to do for myself. How about you, Mr. Griffiths? Do you favor a 401k style plan? Absolutely. I think we definitely need to move, and we could do it immediately with new hires, move to a free market-based uh, defined contribution rather than a defined benefit program. But on top of that, we have to realize that there are some contractual obligations that we are bound to by our Pennsylvania Constitution, which means we immediately have to get voluntary concessions from those who are participating in the pension program as it is. So we have to bring those people together and let them see that they have to be willing to accept a poor portion of something when really down the road what we're looking at is they're not going to get anything. Medical marijuana has been a, uh, on the table. Uh, is that something, uh, can you just briefly tell me if you favor what's been done? Uh, I volunteer as the chairman of the board of a school for children with developmental disabilities and I wholeheartedly support it. 
I support the responsible administration of medicine for those people who truly need it. I think medical cannabis is a great opportunity to provide for people in a very specific area uh, of a natural plant that is renewable, a resource that we could grow right here in Pennsylvania that would give great relief to many children, uh, many families suffering with a disease like epilepsy and so on. I agree with what we did. I think we could have done a little bit better, but we'll accept what we have. All right. Um, the pipeline, that's been an issue, I know, through Lancaster and Lebanon counties. Uh, I'm not so sure, sure the state at this point has uh, too much to do with that, but just wondering what, what your position is on the pipeline that would run through Lebanon County. The pipeline is an emotional charge issue. You need uh, some form of uh, understanding of the regulatory concerns to have the pipeline put in effectively. It's got to be done in appropriate environmental concerns, but we need to build the pipeline. I understand why our citizens you know, are concerned about it. With that being said, it is a federal issue regulated by federal law. So at this point, as a state legislature, there isn't much we can do about it at this time. And I actually think the, the question of the pipeline goes to one step further. It's because our citizens are afraid of eminent domain. They're afraid that they're not going to be fairly uh, um, compensated for the land that is taken to use this. And, and that's what we have to guarantee happens. The pipeline could be beneficial for the state, but we have to make sure that through the use of eminent domain, we protect our citizens' rights. Do you think eminent domain is any way gone too far in, in any cases? I think in some cases it has. I think in some cases it has. Any thoughts on eminent domain? We've, uh, we've seen citizens protesting. <laughs> and again, I understand why, and I would agree that we just need to make sure that they are compensated fairly for what is taken. That's really the issue about the pipeline, is the eminent domain is a major concern, and it has gone too far. All right, very good. Well, thank you so much, uh, all of you, for joining us today, and we wish you the best. Thanks thank for you. Thank coming you. in. Thank, thank you very much. much. And Pennsylvania, the primary is April 26th. And, of course, keep up with the latest election news on WGAL.com. You'll find more information on the other races that we're following that you can only find online. Tonight on WGAL, it's a live episode of The Voice at 8, followed by a new Chicago Med at 9 and Chicago Fire at 10. Then stay up for 11 nonstop minutes of the day's stories on News 8 at 11, followed by The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon.